Hello. Hello. And welcome in to another episode of Farm to Fame. I am Kelsey Winger. That is Peter Moylan. That is Maddie Mass. None of us matter. You guessed it. None of us matter because we have Taylor Trammell on the pod. It's me. It is me. Yeah. Do we love Taylor Trammell? Good golly gracious, we talked about you so stinking much last year. We just loved following along with your with your year. Um, I love that you are an Atlanta guy. We are neighbors, I think. Does your family <laughs> still live out here? Yeah, they do. I still live out there as well. <gasps> we yeah. are neighbors. We Where are do you neighbors. work at? I work at Champ Fit Performance in Powder Springs. Nice. From Atlanta, went to Mount Perrin High School, one of the most Hogwarty, beautiful high school campuses you will ever see. What's it called? Mount Perrin. It's literally like it's it's a college campus. It's just stunning. It is. It is. If we're being completely honest, they do a great job over there. It's it's a college campus, pretty much. Yeah. And you are in Arizona right now for spring training. Yep. How long does it feel for you to like click? Be like, ooh, I'm ready. I feel like, I feel like, so I had a home run um, two days ago. And I feel like that was a game where it kind of like, it was like, okay, good. You know, I felt like it's kind of been like, you know, spring training was weird because like this year I felt like it's kind of been just like here, good at bats, no results. And then like the other day I was like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, like now, now we're taking off. But uh, for me, it's just, it's just been an experience. I'm just uh, just glad that I have a job. I'm glad that, you know, uh, I get to play the game that I love, get to sign for fans, get to be around fans because last year it stunk so much because we mm. had separated and everything like that. So now it's just great whenever kids just get to come up to us, like just fans get to come up to us and like we actually get to sign, interact with them. It's just oh, it's it so it different. So, so much better. Mm. Well, does, is that all it takes? Is that all it takes? Is just one swing, <laughs> I think and so. then because I've never, I've never had to get myself ready to hit. Can For me, it's me? like a constant. I used to hit. I used to really be able to hit. Like, and I like don't want to actually, actually in the big leagues, you could hit. No, I could not hit in the big leagues. But <laughs> if we're talking like progression, there was a progression where I was heading. I almost signed as a first baseman with the Colorado Rockies. So hey. before I signed again as a pitcher, I almost signed as a hitter. So my story would have been pitcher, hitter, pitcher, had I been a hitter with the Rockies in whenever. But my question is, I've never had to get myself ready to be a hitter, but is that all it takes? It's just that one swing and all of a sudden you're like, okay, now I think I'm ready to go. Or is it a progression? It's a progression, but once you feel that one thing, it just clicks. So mm -hmm. for example, uh, like I said the other day, I had a home run and kind of like, I was just like here, good at bats, not really getting results, like good pitchers make good pitches, just staying like kind of like here. And then uh, I, Hit, hit a home run and I was just like there it is and so today uh I was uh getting at bats on the backfields um just you know the the whole like you, you walk over you lead off every inning I hated yeah. it to be honest because I'm like these guys need to get their at bats it just what it didn't really feel good to me but they were like do it get your at bats um and I kind of it kind of cool because now like I like I mean I have to get them something and I'm getting them like everybody like ten dollars like Starbucks gift cards just nice. because I took a batch from them. And yeah. I was just like, okay, I don't know how to feel about this, but they were like, cool, do it. And I was like, oh, okay. Felt really good today. Uh getting, I think I got like six, seven at bats today. Mm. Felt really good. Um, hitting the ball. Um, timing was good. And I was like, there it is. It clicked. Uh, so it felt really good and uh feel like really good overall. I remember the first time that I saw that uh, was Adam LaRoche in the backfields in Braves spring training. And it was so interesting to me that it would literally go there. I think he had about eight or nine at bats and he mm -hmm. would lead off every inning. And it's, it's so good to see, but then I guess that, that kind of, that kind of in-game pitching nine times within a short space gets you really locked in. I'd imagine. Absolutely. And then it's also like, I think there's a, the, 
there's a confidence part of it. Um, there's a like a, a pressure part of it as well, because you're not you're not focusing on mechanics. You're not focusing on you're, there's a lot of things you're just not focusing on. There's not a lot of whole bunch of people just looking at you. You're literally just picture you and pretty much nobody's in the stands. So mm. it's just like competing. You're not worried about who's what if you're like coaches. It's a whole bunch of stuff that you're just not worried about. And ultimately it's just, it's really cool just because you're out there, you're getting at bats and results don't matter, but you're just competing. Mm. And it's so cool. Uh, it was really cool for me today. And then I uh, got a chance to talk to like some younger players today too. And I was talking to them about certain things I did. And I was like, wait, do I even do that? And it just helped me out because I was helping them out uh, with like certain things. So it was really cool. Uh, we're, we've talked a lot about the Mariners farm system and, and just the talent that's coming up through there. Uh, I mean, you're surrounded by talent over there, but how, how's a Georgia guy in Seattle? Like how, how are you like in the, the weather? Like what, what is it like being in <laughs> Seattle? Seattle, uh, me personally, I love Seattle in the summer. Uh, <laughs> now I went, I went this off season uh, and it was November and I was there for about a week and every day it was, it was like cloudy and rainy every single day. Yeah. And it rained, how to put it, it rained just enough to upset you, if that makes sense. So <laughs> you, know, like, you know how, like if you're driving and like you're driving down the road and it's like a little bit of sprinkle, it's like, okay, I don't have to put on my windshield wipers. And it's like, oh, okay, cool. I can just drive and like, it's whatever. It's just sprinkling. But it, it just rained and it was just like just hard enough where I had to put my like, my my uh, windshield wipers on like one. And it was just like, and it would just get like, like dot, 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 dot. And just get just enough, like five seconds later. And now I'm just like, okay, well now it's getting like streaky because I don't know if I should put it on two or three. Now like <laughs> fast. Now I'm driving and it's just like now you gotta add your own water. Now you gotta add your own water to the rain because it's not enough. Exactly. It's it's awful. It's so not awful, but it was how it was strategy. In the summer, it's beautiful. Well, you're from Georgia, as I've mentioned 27 times on the podcast so far. Something I didn't realize is um how great of a football player you were in high school, Mm. along with playing baseball. When you were in high school, what sport did you think was your ticket? Probably football, to be honest, if being completely honest, I, it, here's how, here's how it kind of like went. So my freshman and sophomore year, I was good at baseball. Um, but then uh, I was also pretty good at football as well. And offers were coming in for, for football. And I was like, Oh, uh, I might as well just play football. And I just kept playing baseball. And uh, I was just like, oh, this is kind of like something I do. But I hated practice. I couldn't stand it. Uh, Football practices were awful for me because the way my mind worked in high school was, why in the world am I going to prepare for a team that I know we're going to just absolutely just molly wop? And molly wop, molly (laughs) wop. And so I, I'm just like, why am I like, I could go at home and like study and keep in mind, like I was a, I was a decent student, but like I wasn't a natural student. So I, I actually really had to like work and study. And I was like, look, like, why am I, why am I going to go to like practice right now when I could just go home and study? And I know we're, I'm going to just drop like three touchdowns against these guys. So that, that was kind of like how I knew, like I didn't need to play football and I think it was my junior year of baseball, like offers started to come in, uh, like coaches were actually talking to me and stuff like that. And I was like, I might be able to do this. Um, this was actually like pretty cool. And my, my junior year, I committed to Georgia Tech for football, no, for baseball, uh, with the possibility of being a football player there. And uh, I, I, I wanted to kind of like do that dual type of role. Um, and then just from talking to certain guys, they were kind of like, Hey, like you can do this, but it's really tough. And I was like, oh, okay, well I can go play baseball there. That's no problem. And then, uh, my senior year for football, 
uh, I started late because I was doing the whole uh, circuit for like showcases and everything for baseball. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I got to, I got to my first, um, I got to like my first game or something like that. And I hadn't even practiced like a complete full week. So I missed like the first three days of school because of baseball. And then we had like a game and I, I don't even think I had like a full week of practice or anything like that. And I just went out and played and I just, I don't know, I dropped like four or five touchdowns or something like that. <laughs> and then like the season went on and I was just like, I honestly was having fun with it because I didn't care. And I, I ended up having one of the best like seasons of a Georgia football player if like of, in high school football of all time i'm like oh it's pretty cool <laughs> and so then uh then i was like ah, i'm kind of done with this. this is like my farewell tour and so I, <laughs> I was like i'm done with football and uh baseball i mean the rest was history after my high school season so it was, it was pretty cool well i mean you look at your you look at your stats first of all ajc atlanta journal constitution for for you non-atlanta folks um named you georgia's best two sports stud i love that the word stud is involved um <laughs> in that and you rushed for 2500 yards with 38 touchdowns and then in baseball you hit 463 <laughs> <laughs> it, it's kind of it just makes steals. everything that anybody else did kind of just subpar like i was pretty good at one sport great yeah yeah it was it was it was really fun and i i credit it to like kind of like what i'm trying to get back to now is just i don't want to say not caring but just just being free you know mm -hmm. uh not uh not really worrying about what a lot of people have to say and just knowing what your pathway is so that was the really cool part for me i enjoyed it well baseball seemed uh to have worked out pretty well whenever you were drafted in 2016 35th overall did you have like a line in your mind where you're saying like, if I'm drafted before this, I'm going to go. And if I'm not, I'm going to go to tech. I love these questions because I never got to go on a draft. So just, just full, I want to know every detail of you going to the draft. Did you know, did you think you were going to go a certain round? Did you have a feeling? Cause some people have feelings and they get disappointed. Did you have a feeling? Tell me everything. Go, ready, go. <laughs> yeah. I kind of, I kind of knew I, so I'll, I'll say this. I'll say this. Okay. So when I was in, uh, when the season started, it was like, okay, like you're going to probably go top 10 rounds. And so I was like, oh, cool. It's great. Wonderful. Uh, I think I can do this. Uh, and then two, um, once the season started going, it started, that number started to like shrink. So it was like, oh, one to eight, one to five top three and now i was like okay at the end it was like yeah you're most likely going to go first round and i was like oh this is pretty cool and i'm i don't know if i don't get in trouble i'm not going to say the team name or anything like that. i think there was like i knew i wasn't going to go past a certain number if that makes mm -hmm. sense yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh there was a number in mind as far as signing bonus as well so i kind of like already knew uh where i was going to go partially and uh Cincinnati picked me up at uh 35 and I was I was ecstatic you know but honestly I was ecstatic I was happy but then I was also like I was also a wreck as well so hear me out on like the boards and everything like that they had me going like 13th or something like that mid like whatever that number was and so keep in mind like for me I'm like my number is just dropping at yeah. 35 there's a big gap in between that and so I was just like well this is interesting so like I'm like well I just had a draft party people were telling me like you don't have to have a draft party I was like well I want my family to be here I want everybody to enjoy yeah. the moment and everything like that and I was like did I just jump the ball right here did I just like do a little bit too much and then uh you know my name was called at 35th um with uh Cincinnati and I was ecstatic just because I, I had knew a few guys over there uh, in the system and everything like that. And I was just, I was just so happy. All righty. We are interrupting this interview with Taylor Trammell to talk to you once again about the Tops Bunt app. But before I even get into the ad read, uh, Peter was literally, I just made him, I interrupted him mid sentence because he was just talking about like how he actually uses this app every single day. He was talking about diamonds. Girl's best friend and mine. <laughs> so if anybody wants to flick me some diamonds, I am here for what, it. What do you, what, what is causing you to go on the app every single day? 
just because it's a different collection that comes out. They release a new collection almost every day. The one that came out the other day was a shoe collection that I never knew was a Ooh. thing. So there's all different kinds of like pimp shoes that guys are wearing. It's it's unreal. I don't know if you've seen this. If you collect all of the shoes, like the cards in that set, they'll give yeah. you a Ronald Acuna shoe card as the reward. Did you see that? No way. Yeah. I haven't seen that. Peter was like talking about his daily usage of this app before we were recording so like I just need you to know that like this is genuine Peter is used but we saw so much about what the app could do when we were in Arizona uh Top Spun is the official digital trading card of Major League Baseball and it is back for the 2022 season you can collect and trade your favorite players from across the league with baseball fans around the world even Peter Moylan and Alpharetta Georgia um, new packs available every day, like Peter was just saying, featuring brand new content like shoes, original artwork, and classic tops card designs. You can bring your card collection to life by setting lineups using cards in real time, scoring fantasy contests. So, for more info, you can download the free Tops Bunt app by clicking the link in the description or visiting the App Store or Google Play. Tops Bunt. Are those shoes? Mookie Betts. Mookie. Uh, Shoe edition. That's so cool. What's so been cool. another collection that you've liked? Look, they're all really good, but there's obviously there's different levels you can get. There's legendary, there's iconic, there's rare, super rare. I've only got one legendary card and it's uh, it's pretty special. <laughs> it's Wade Boggs. Uh, love that for But you. look, when you got, it's only 51 of those in the world, by the way. 51 of those in the world. Dang. Dang. Go download the Top Spun app and you can be like Peter Moylan. Maddie Mass, that looks like Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge, shoe auto. Oops. Oh. Y'all know who else probably has a shoe game? Taylor Trammell. Taylor so Trammell. Get, let's get back to the interview. There's Taylor. <laughs> let's get back to him in real life, shall we? First of all, we love Tyler Stevens. When you think about your time with the Reds, what stands out? the most to you because obviously I mean Tyler Stevenson talked about you a ton when he came on the podcast you've maintained a lot of those friendships and relationships from your time in that org yes uh so funny thing we just went out to dinner last night um <laughs> cool. so but no the, those guys um I had a lot of those guys at my wedding uh I had a lot of those guys um TJ TJ Friedel uh, is another one who's a big uh great friend for me uh, as long, along with Tyler, uh, and there are a lot of other guys, uh, the, we had a mental skills coach called, uh, his name was Frank Fister. Uh, Eric Davis is a mentor to me. Uh, and there's just a, there's a lot of guys within that organization that I still have friendships with, and I, I still am in communication with. So my time there, it will probably be like the people because I, I grew as a baseball player, obviously, but as a person, I think I grew even more with guys holding me accountable with guys, just being there, the good and the bad. It was just, it was, it's magnificent just to under to feel the love that I had around like certain guys around there, because I've heard horror stories from guys with certain organizations. And I'm like, bro, my first three years of professional baseball have been some of the best times of my life. Mm -hmm. And I grew with those guys consistently and here we are, you know, two years, well, three years later without being on that team in that organization, I'm still really good friends with all of those guys. How does Did your you guys hands... have some success? In... Sorry, go ahead. I just want to know how his hand size compares to Tyler <laughs> Stevenson. So Tyler, so here's, here's the funny part. So Tyler has weird like hands. So his are like, let's talk about it. His... What do you mean? So like his one, his thumb is a lot weirder than mine. So like his is he has he's gonna he's gonna kill me. Give me details. He's got fat thumbs, right? Yep. He has toe thumbs. So I'm gonna like, text him right now. Yeah, so he's got toe thumbs. <laughs> oh, like thumb me, I have like a weird like hitchhiker's thumb. Oh. Yeah, it goes like right there. So like here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so like that's, that's how my thumb goes. No, no, just don't move your thumb. But yeah, yeah, get ready. Yep, yep. No enough. one, no one has control of the end of the metatarsals or metacarpals. What are they? Oh, called? enough, no enough. Those. What <laughs> words are you saying right now? <laughs> I have like 
lizard hand. So my my hands are like longer, but his are like stubbier. If that makes sense. So like, <laughs> I think we're kind of like the same. He's probably got me beat like a little bit on like the width here, but I think we're almost the same. But he has pretty like big hands as well. So I think he has me beat by a little bit. I have little hands. <laughs> <laughs> That's not funny. I'm sorry. Tyler was, Tyler was showing us. He like had a coffee in his hand and it looked like a freaking like kid's cup from like Chipotle or something. Um, yeah. You got married this. Oh, first of all, I want to know because one of the one of the notes that Maddie has um, just during your time with the Reds that in your three seasons with the Reds, you stole 90 bags. We talked about the bags that you stole in high school, 29. How, how would you describe your game to somebody who um lives on the east coast and doesn't get to watch west coast <laughs> baseball <laughs> uh i would say it's exciting uh you're always going to see something uh from me whether it be at the plate uh in the field defensively or anything like that it, i think it's um just fun it's electric and it's fun just because like i'm out there just being myself mm-hmm. um there were times where i i I wasn't myself where I thought a lot of what other people thought and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I really had to break past that. And now it's just, it's just fun. I'm I'm doing whatever I want to do uh, while also just being who I am uh, and understanding being true to myself in the box, out on the field, in the dugout. uh, Because at the end of the day, like we play this game for so long, however long we do that, you look back, I don't want to look back and think that I played this game for somebody else, uh, f- how somebody else wanted wants me to play it, rather than just how I'm playing it, because yeah. I play hard, I play fast, I play just energetic, that I, I want to look back at my career and be like, I was myself for those X amount of years that I was playing the game. Yeah. And that's, that's like the trend that we're seeing players take now. And we just love it. Uh, like we talked about jazz Chisholm a lot last year. I mean, he's electric to watch, you know, I mean, that, that dude's in the, and don't even get me started on a shoe game and his hair. <laughs> it's phenomenal. Um, yeah. But I'm, I'm loving that trend that, that it, people are just having fun with it and showing their personalities because it just hadn't been that way for a long time. Um, that's absolutely true. You came at the right time, man. Yes. You used to get personalities used to get used to get stifled back in the day. You know, you couldn't show the real you. So I'm glad I'm glad you guys are all getting a chance to to play the way the game's supposed to be played because you guys are making an impact already. And it's it's really, really fun to watch. I'm glad we get a chance to talk to you guys doing this, doing this podcast. I agree. I think that you and I were supposed to be at a wedding, but Tyler Stevenson was a groomsman in yours, right? Yes, and vice versa. I was a. I love fan. that. I love. Is he one of your like best friends in the whole wide world? Yeah. Oh, thousand percent. Yeah, that's my dog. Yeah, that's my dog. So we had the like we're the team amigos. So me, TJ Friedel, and Tyler Stevenson. So we're the team amigos. That's so cool. So you yeah. met them when you were with the Reds. Yes, uh, I did. And then uh, you moved around a little bit. Uh, one of the things that Tyler brought up whenever he was on our podcast was. I mean, how emotional and difficult it was for him when you got traded to the Padres and mm-hmm. watching you pack up. Um, I mean, it, he just talked about how close you guys were and how many times you guys talked about, like, we're going to make it to the show together. Like, we're going to we're going to go up together. And then to see you get traded, like, broke his heart. But you were in mm-hmm. a massive trade um, and you were a big piece in that in that trade. Trevor Bauer was involved in that trade. Yasiel Puig. Um, what, what did it feel like to be so valued in that big of a move? At first I didn't, it didn't really feel valued. Um, it was weird because I, I didn't, I didn't really know too much about what trades, like what trades were. Uh, everybody was talking about like the deadline and I, I didn't know anything. I was just playing the game. And uh, it did hurt, uh, especially when I got taken out in like the ninth inning. Uh, and my manager, Pat Kelly, came up to me. He was like, hey, um, you know, congratulations, you've been traded. And I said, my, my heart sunk. I remember it just clear as day. And we're in the dugout. And I'm like, oh, shoot. Like, I'm not going to be with these guys anymore. And it, it was just mm-hmm. like, it was just like mind boggling to me. And uh, 
it, it stunk, you know, being able to like, just having to tell like my friends, you know, that I had been playing with for the past four seasons, uh, just like, Hey, you know, like, I'm, I'm not going to be around anymore. Like I got traded. And it's just like, even with, uh, even with my girlfriend at the time, now wife, uh, just her friends um, within the organization that yeah. they built a great relationship with um, and they still have a great relationship today. Like it was tough. And uh, I didn't know anything about like what it in- entitled and everything like that. Uh, and I was just so like, oh, it hurt me really in all honesty. And um, it, it's a part of the business. And that was my first time understanding like, okay, like at the end of the day, this is a business, you mm-hmm. know, everybody says that, but that was my first taste of like, oh yeah, like this is a business dude. Like this is like what happens. And so it was, it was, it was pretty difficult for me. Um, but I went to a great organization. I met some great people with San Diego. It kind of stinks that it was, it was only for like a year, really. It, it was exactly a year and one month pretty much. And I was just like, wow. Okay. But I met some great people over there. Uh, again, lifelong friends that I'm going to have uh, within that organization and just, just good down to earth people as well. Awesome. Pete, you had a question. Yeah. I was just going to say, was your second example of how it's a business that this previous off season, the no, lockout, the lockout? Making sure you I was going to say, he's talking about the lockout. <laughs> yeah. That's when you get to realize yeah. It's a business real quick. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, well, personally, it would be the first time I got sent down to triple a mm. that was kind of like my first i was like oh yeah okay well, this is, this is how did that legit. go down just this that because i've been sent down multiple times how did yours go and most of the time it's just it's really just it's kind of like one time i got emotional but mm-hmm. apart from that it was usually just oh, okay look i get it but how did yours yeah. go down my okay so i kind of got uh i got called where was i at the first oh we were in la and uh, I got I got a call um, after the games like, hey, you know, get watch you in office. And I was like, OK, well, OK. So I go down there and he's like, hey, you know, like ask me some like how I was doing everything like that. He's like, hey, look, like, you know, we're, we're going to option you to triple A. And I was like, shoot. I was like, mm. and it was just like it was, it was just weird because I'm like, I, I didn't really feel in the groove or anything like that. It was just kind of like everything was kind of like going like this. And uh, I was like, okay. And so, um, yeah, it's kind of like the, how the conversation went. Yeah, it's it's tough. But you, you went down to AAA and obviously did some work down there, man. Yeah, it was fun. It was really fun. Uh, I got to play with uh, – now he is first base coach, outfield coach Negron. Uh, that's what I call him. Uh, but he's uh, he's Chris Negron. Uh, I got mm. to play, play for him. And uh, I also got to play for uh, Rob Marcella and um, Eric Young Jr. And they were uh, are, are arguably one of the best coaching staffs I've ever played with. Uh, young young coaches, and they just they just told us to have fun and play our game, and we ended up winning uh, championship out there, which was great. That's awesome. I don't think I knew that. It was, mm. it was amazing. We 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 were we were nasty and oh, I can, yeah you look at that you i mean you look at who you guys have coming up i mean it's mm. it's insane i mean were you were was julio rodriguez up there with you during that time no he wasn't he was in double a uh i think it was in high a and double a all last year when you okay you talked about how difficult it was when you got traded the first time mm-hmm. was it more difficult or easier the second time you got traded, especially with how close it, you know, they, how close in time they happened. Yeah, honestly, it was, it was, I had mixed emotions. Uh, so bear with me. It was like, I was upset because it felt like I was just kind of like, just bouncing, bouncing around. around. And I'm just like, dude, like, I just want to like, stability somewhere that I can anchor down and uh that's kind of like how I felt at first and then it also was like okay I'm going to Seattle I know a lot of guys over there I have a lot of good friends over there and I was like look like this is some place where I can like do something and like you know get my feet under me and like try and get somewhere and uh it was I mean I I can't say much more I can't say how much good things I can uh, with the organization now with now, I mean, 
from the, from the, the fans to the, the guys in the locker room, like it's, it's, it's amazing just how many guys just care for each other. They want to be around each other and want to like the fans just love the city. And I, I, I the feelings mutual both. Yeah. Ways. Austin Nola was involved in that trade with you. And I went to LSU. Austin Nola was like one of the greatest college shortstops. And I tell the story all the time because when Austin Nola left LSU, everybody was like, now what? Like we lost Austin Nola. It's the end of the world. What are we going to do? And then enters Alex Bregman. Um, But it is just so mind blowing to me that he is catching now because he was such a great defensive shortstop. It just is crazy to me that he got that he just changed positions with the success he had at, at a school like LSU. I mean, you know, you're playing the best of the best at, in the SEC West. Um, that, I hated how much that all rhymed. Um, <laughs> I'm just yeah. going to say that to you. I, I like, I was about Real to say shit. I loved it. And then I realized that I hated it. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it's still, I tell that, it's just still mind blowing to me that he's, that he's uh, a catcher now. That's just like completely opposite of a shortstop in my mind. Um, <laughs> um, okay, so 2021, we're with the Mariners now. We're loving life. It's a little rainy <laughs> and our windshield wiper is on speed one, trying to figure out what to do if we want to take it up to speed two. Mm-hmm. You were added to the 40 man in 2020. We start 2021 crack opening day. Mm-hmm. What was that like for you? It was it was amazing. I mean, I I don't really know. It was weird because it was COVID, and so like people were like, "Yeah, it's kind of weird. It's not like opening day, opening day." But it still was really sick, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I had so throughout the day, like I was I wasn't nervous or anything like that. I think um, when just memories. I was waiting at the bottom of the stairs and it was my debut. And I'm like, I was like, oh man, it kind of like all hit me at once. And it was just like, oh, well, you know, four-year-old Taylor would be pretty, pretty mm-hmm. proud of me right now. And it was, it was really, it was a really cool experience just because it was opening day and I got a chance to be around some really cool people mm. and just going out there. I was like, the only thing that I wanted throughout that game was just to get one fly ball. That's the mm. only thing I wanted to get just because once you think I might be weird, but every time like there's something like a new game, a new spring training game, like the first like big league, anything big, the only thing I need is just one fly ball or one ball hit at me and I'm good because mm-hmm. that anticipation of like seeing the ball, how it's going to play and everything like that, it's just nerve wracking. So yeah. I think I may have, I don't know if I got a fly ball before that, but I know, and I think it may have been the first Mm -hmm. ball that I got. It was a outfield assist because Evan Longoria ran in my face and I threw him out at second. JP made a cool tag and I was like, all right, we're good. We're good. Mm -hmm. Now the nerve is gone. Now it's like, we're about to kick the Giants butt right now. (laughs) That's how how it felt for me. Did you though? Because they were really good last year. (laughs) Took two two or three from them. So... (laughs) Did you think that you had a chance to crack opening day? Like, were there moves made where there was like an open spot in the outfield? Or was there a certain point where you were like, yo, I actually like have a chance to crack here? I had no idea. Yeah, I really, I really didn't have an idea or anything like that. I honestly. How did that tell you? uh, Oh, it was cool. So I went to, uh, I went to Skip's office, spring training. uh, And he came up to me. He was like, hey, you know, how are you doing? And I was like, doing well. And uh, there was, you? yeah. And uh, also backstory, there were guys that were telling me like, Hey, you know, like probably going to make open a day roster. So get some stuff in order and everything like that. And I'm just like, I don't, I don't know. Nobody's told me anything. So yeah. that's continue. the crazy part. They can see it. You can't. Yeah. And I was like, I'm going to continue to do what I do. I'm not going to get content or anything like mm-hmm. that. No chance. I'm going to do that. Into his, he's like, hey, how you doing? I'm like, yeah, oh, chilling, good. Well, he was like, uh, you know, how's uh, how you think? You know, you've been doing doing a lot of good things, Cam. How do you think you've been doing? I was like, pretty good. I mean, I'm just out here just grinding <laughs> for the most part. <laughs> and he goes, I think you've been doing pretty good, like pretty great, actually. 
I was like, I appreciate that. Thanks for uh, buttering my biscuit. Thank you. Appreciate it. And uh, <laughs> Uh, I was like, uh, he was like, you know, so he came up to me. He's like, how how would you feel if, you know, you you found out you were going to be our opening day center fielder? And I said, (gasps) I was like, I freaked out. I freaked out. I was like, did you cry? Yeah, I cried. Oh yeah. I was a wreck. And I was like, I was crying just because it was like, no, it was just, it was really cool just because I had worked so hard and still like, there's a lot of things that I've gone through um throughout my like well throughout my life yes but throughout my career there's a lot of things I've gone uh gone through still going through and it was just like bro like you ever hear people just saying like I just need that one thing that's just gonna like Mm -hmm. just one thing to go good and that was like my one thing and um it it was a it was a thing that I worked so hard for for so many years that now it's like, okay, like those moments where I was, uh, I would be in the weight room at seven o'clock in the morning. Uh, I would be training from like seven to like one o'clock, uh, doing all these things just to, you know, just to hone in on my craft. Like it came, like it paid off, you know? And uh, it was it was extremely cool just because I got to, I got to experience that and I got to call my family. I got to call my friends and it was just, it was just an amazing experience. And I was just like, I was a wreck just because like I earned it, you know, like you, yeah. you look back and you're like, you earn like a lot of accolades throughout say minor leagues, high school and everything like that. But that's like, that's not even at the, like the summit, that's not even at the tip of the mountaintop uh, from like being a big leaguer. So like, it's cool now, like when I get to say like, I'm a big leaguer and there's a lot of things I want to say that I can't say now, like all-star gold Glover, like a whole bunch of things that I'm working towards, but it was like a nice jump start of like, Hey, the work that you're putting in now may not have shown like the first like week or so that you were doing it, but over a span of time, over time periods and everything like that, they're, they are working. We're interrupting it again because it's March madness. I don't know where we're going to be at a tournament on Wednesday, but I do know that Matt Messina's Villanova Wildcats have made it to the final four. Congratulations to our own Maddie Mass. Um, and college basketball fans, you can join in on the action on the court during the biggest tournament of the year with DraftKings Sportsbook. You can turn your team's victory into your own big win. New customers can bet $5 on any team to win and get $200 in free bets if they do. It's that simple. If they win, you win. If Villanova wins, Maddie wins. If Sportsbook isn't available in your state yet, you can still join the College Hoop Action with DraftKings Pools. Everyone can play free pools all March long for a shot at a share of over $250,000 in prizes. Simply join a pool and answer questions like who will make it to the next round and who will hit the most three pointers and then track your results. You like that, Pete? Love that. Download Energy. the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code JOHNBOY. Bet $5 on any college hoops team to win and get $200 in free bets if they do. If they win, you win with promo code JOHNBOY this week at DraftKings Sportsbook. 21 and up. Restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Rest in peace, St. Peter's. Coach already <laughs> left. Wild. Taylor Trammell didn't leave. He's still with us, though. When you look at last season um, and you talked about, you know, the difficulties whenever you got sent down, where did you see the most growth in your game when you were sent down and able to, I mean, you hit 263, 12 home runs, 71 triple A games. Like where did you see the most growth in that time? Um, I would say for me, the most growth would probably be off the field. Um, There were a lot of things I dealt with off the field. Yeah, I think everybody, you know, has a thing where they deal with some type of anxiety, some type of, uh, you know, things that they go, you know, we're, we're in a, we're in a profession where everything that you do is put under a microscope. And so uh, for me, the, that was the biggest thing of like, like I said, early in the podcast is not really worrying about what other people think of you, understanding who you are and being true to who you are and being true to your, to yourself. So that was like the biggest thing for me. 
And when I, I think it was after the second time I got sent down, I was like, I was trying to be everything that other people wanted me to be. Um, hey, you're not doing this well. It's like, okay, I got to do this right. Now, the one thing that I'm like, the one thing I think I'm doing well is deteriorating and I'm doing all these other things. And I'm like, well, to the point where I was like, I mean, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm finished. Like I'm done. Like I'm, I'm kind of fed up with everything. And I'm just like, man, I just, I just want to go out and I just want to play. And that's where I gained a lot of respect for um, Eric Young Jr. And uh, Chris Negron, because when I got sent down the second time, they were like, Hey, look, like, I could see some things when you were up there a uh, second time, like just go out and play. I'm not going to say anything to you. I'm not going to coach you. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to let you be you. And that was huge for me because I wasn't the second time I got sit down, I was like, um, I'm not trying to be anybody else. I don't need to be anybody else because nobody can do what I do and vice versa. I can't do things that other people do as well. So it was really, um, I think for me as a man, as a, a person at the end of the day, like I grew so much from the trials and tribulations where now, like, for example, like I said, I'm kind of like a really, nothing crazy good or anything like that spring train. I struck out the other day and I was just like, I'm upset. Maybe. Yeah. I want to compete. I want to win. But at the end of the day, it's just like, I can't go back. I can't change it. I'm not going to throw a fit or anything like that. I'm just going to be me. I'm going to enjoy my myself. I'm going to enjoy bringing, being or trying to be a light to other people. That's where I feel like I grow. I grew uh, from last year to this year. That's awesome. so good. And Pete, I know that has to resonate. I mean, with you, you have. Oh, yeah. 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 You uh, dude, it's, uh, it's that's. There's been so many times and you're going to continue to, to face these things as well. And the hardest that the, the biggest lesson I got was it's so much easier to be yourself around other people than trying to pretend to be somebody else because you, you don't have to act anymore, dude. It's just, just be yourself. If people are going to love you for you and if they don't, that's okay too. So mm -hmm. as long as you can be yourself and act like yourself and you're going to go through struggles, I've lived through more struggles than any humans ever really had to face. I've been up and down baseball on field, off field, you name it. But the fact that you come back and you're able to speak to us like this, it, it says a lot about you personally. And I'm, I, I know that those gold gloves, those all stars, they're going to be in your future at some point, man. Yeah. And we'll and be think, tweeting about it. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I can, uh, I, I don't, I feel some, I don't know why I feel like I need to say this, but uh, if there's like kids out there watching or anything like that or anything listening. Uh, my, one of my good friends, Aaron Foss has told me this. He was a Reds player who I'm still really good friends with. Uh, we, we, we started talking this off season and I was telling kind of like this stuff I'm telling you right now. And uh, he, he told me this one thing that stuck with me and I, I couldn't, I haven't been able to get it on my mind because it just sticks with me. And he says, uh, he told me, he's like, Hey T like one of the things that I've grown and I feel like I've gotten the most growth with when I found this out, it's like, I'm not responsible for other people's feelings towards me if that makes sense mm -hmm. so if i if i'm pouring into people and they're just like hey i don't want anything to do with you i'm not responsible for that you know yeah. uh, and that's the that's the really cool part and then as well as if i'm myself throughout my whole life my whole entire life however it could be baseball in between here well throughout however i'm going to be pretty happy every mm -hmm. night that i go to bed knowing that I wasn't trying to be somebody else. If that yeah. makes sense. So if I'm myself, I, I'm going to smile every day because I know I'm, I'm Taylor Trammell and I'm who I am, you know, unapologetically. Yeah. Unapologetically. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I like how I feel. Taylor, if you don't get into broadcasting when you're done playing, you're robbing the entire universe <laughs> of like you're robbing us. Uh, before we let you go, I just, I do want to ask a couple questions just about 2022. Um, I mean, you've mentioned some of some of the goals that, that you have in mind, obviously gold glove, all-star, things like that. But when you look at next season specifically, um, and I know I don't I don't really do play, do you put like numbers in your head? Like, do you say like I want to hit X and have this many home runs, mm -hmm. this many stolen bases, or like how do you enter in to a season, Pete? What was that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, absolutely. Everybody had, no, I will, I certainly did. I had targets for sure. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not like a specific it. number, but it's like, you know how you do the greater than? It's like, mm -hmm. my average needs to be greater than this. Or my, you know, you don't, I don't want to put too many limitations on myself, but uh, it goes into that. That's like the broad spectrum. And then like, it's, every day that you, you get the macro and then you go micro. So it's like, okay, now every game, I want to be able to have two quality at bats where I did not, I did not succumb to whatever his pitches were or anything like yeah. that. Um, and then like little tiny little things like that, or like every game, I want to make sure that I'm behind every ball and coming through it and making good play little tiny things like that. Those yeah. are like the micro things, but like uh, Peter said, the macro, yeah, I think Dude. everybody has that. What, how much do you think everything you went through last year prepared you more so for this season? I think, I think pretty, pretty well. Like um, how much more prepared do you feel going into 2022 than you did in 2021 because of everything you had to battle through in 2021 is probably a better way to ask that. Yeah, uh, I, I feel like I'm more prepared. Um, just uh, even in spring training, like there's like, you know, like we talked about earlier, it's just like that kickstart. It's like mm -hmm. when you're not, when you're not feeling how you want to feel or anything like that, it's easy for guys to panic, hit the panic button, to freak out, to get upset and all these other things. But in all honesty, like for me, I think that's what kind of prepared me for this year. It's like, this game is tough. You know, mm -hmm. I think, uh, you know, you guys see it all the time. Like this game is tough. You got, uh, you know, somebody could be here at for five seasons or however many seasons they're here. And then they it just, it could just go downhill. It's tough. This game is extremely tough and understanding that and simplifying a lot of things uh, for me that I think that's kind of like the biggest thing is just like simplifying, understanding that, this is, this is a game. It's, it's yeah. what you do. It's not who you are. And so competing is a big thing for me, but at the end of the day, I look, I look back and I'm like, okay, like this game is what I do. It's not who I am and not putting that label on yourself. I think that's what I kind of did last year was putting a label of myself. I was like, I'm a big leaguer. I'm a Seattle Mariner. And this is what I do uh, rather than being like, I'm Taylor Trammell. I'm a husband. I'm a, a pretty funny dude. I, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I like doing a lot of things and baseball is something that baseball is my job, you know? Mm -hmm. So th it's little tiny things like that. that just, I just kind of tried to just simplify everything. That's such a healthy realization to reach because you can't plant your identity in your career. You got to plant it in something that's unchanging and, and steady and, um, it's, it's a crazy industry. When, when we've talked a lot about the, the Mariners up and coming prospects, who's, who's a young guy who people should be excited to see? I mean, I feel like Julio Rodriguez is a shoe. And is there anybody else within the Mariners organization who people should be excited to see up? So I, I got two guys. Um, I want to make sure. Yeah, I got two guys. They're, they're in, in a little bit lower levels right now that um, I'm very fond of. They're really cool, cool guys. Um, Harry Ford, mm. <laughs> Harry Ford, uh, he's from Kennesaw as well. Where did he go to high school? Do you know? He went to North Cobb. No, he didn't. Wow. Yeah, Alice yeah. just played there two nights ago. Run rolled him by the way. <laughs> yeah. They don't have their catcher back there anymore. <laughs> he's a great individual. Um, obviously his play speaks for itself. Great individual. And then, uh, He's, I think he's going to be a very special player. And uh, Colin Davis, uh, he's another Georgia guy. Uh, he went to Blessed Trinity. And he's – funny story. Co Colin's brother and myself grew up together. And Colin also – I also grew, grew up with Colin as well. So we have a great relationship. And it's crazy how he – you know, he went to Wofford University and – now we're in the same organization, which is crazy, but he is a, uh, he's an amazing individual, but he also can play, uh, he can play some outfield too. So those are two guys I would say Mariners fans to really look out for this year. Uh, really big years for them. 
Uh, and I'm excited for both of them to see, you know, where their careers are going to end up and uh, how they're just going to thrive in this industry. Maddie, I've got those two names written down for 2023 fantasy. So <laughs> you what were you thinking ahead? <laughs> Taylor, towards, towards the end, oh, first, Maddie or Peter, do y'all have anything else that you wanted to add before we go into our test? No, I say I, you've been, you're awesome, man. You are, yeah. I'm really, I'm sad I didn't get to meet you in person in Arizona, but I'm glad we got to do this and I can't wait to see what you do this year too. Our, yeah. our paths will cross and I'm pretty sure we're going to have a lot of cool conversations leading up in the I future. bet we might. I <laughs> bet we might. Hey man, we'll be, I mean, you know, we're rooting for you. Um, and you're just a player that people can like easily root for. I mean, people just want to see you succeed and we're going to be at the forefront of <laughs> that line cheering for you. Um, but you have to embarrass yourself first because now we're going to do Aussie lingo and Aussie lingo, Peter, if you haven't noticed that the accent is from Australia. So every episode he gives us, um, an Australian term and we have to guess what it means. Maddie has correctly guessed it. One time, I have correctly guessed it zero times, and we have done this about 64 times. times. <laughs> so. yeah. Okay, it's only a word today. It's not a saying. It's just a word. The word is Tucker. Tired. Wait, wait, hold on. Wait, wait. You're saying Tucker. Tucker. Tucker in Australia. Or- oh, you sounded so American there, Pete. Tucker. 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 <laughs> Tucker. Tucker, I love whenever you try to do an. It's, what it's am I, so American bad. accent? Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, I can't even. I can't even. I can't even. I can't even sit here and just look at you guys and lie to you guys. I literally just tried to look it up on my phone. And I have no <laughs> idea. I really. You want to see this? Look at this. I look up. I tried to say it like in a speaking way. I tried to do it. I tried to cheat the system, and I couldn't do it. I have no idea what Tucker is. I'm gonna take a wild guess. Uh, uh, covers because you talk under covers okay maddie i'm going with a pickup truck Chloe, i like that okay a tucker or if we are going to have some tucker is when we go and have dinner that's what we call dinner if you're going to grab let's go and grab some tucker shall we do y'all use the word dinner we do use the word dinner but we also use tucker so this about, is the confusing thing about, about being tucker? australian is that there is three words to describe every single thing. Interesting. Yeah, Taylor said supper. That's what it's probably like supper. Do y'all say supper? Yep. I don't no. say supper. I don't oh. know why supper exists. Is <laughs> Taylor, that's a southern you thing. You also say chunk it. I never say supper. Do you say, if you're like, like I say like, just chunk it in the trash. Oh, yeah. I, well, I say Do you it. say chunk or chuck? Chuck it. It's chuck. It's chuck. Yeah. Is it chunk? Keep a tally, Maddie. This is, new, this is our new poll. You got to keep okay, it, Maddie. You got to keep it tally. Uh, I, I got some. Uh, I got some Georgia lingo for you. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna flip the script now. Why not? <laughs> all right. All right. I'm ready. So, Bring it. Um. All right. What's a good one? What's a good one? Georgia lingo. All right. Here we go. Um. Well, I got two. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do two. Uh. Yeah. So. This is this might be easy. So, what is the term to describe many people in an area? Y'all. Oh, uh, wait, what'd you just say? Okay. Y'all, I just said y'all. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. Okay, good. Okay, I, I mean, the- I thought you were gonna go real simple for the first one. That was simple. That was simple. Now, the oh, second that was one. it. That was correct. That was yeah, y'all. Yeah, oh, y'all, y'all. Come on. Uh, Actually, do you guys mind if I do like two more? Do you guys mind? Yeah. Are you go busy? on. Okay, here we go. Okay. So uh, what is another word for are not? I ain't. There we go. Good job. Okay. That's <laughs> simple. All right. Well, uh, okay. Now I got to, now I got to like actually like put it on. You. Okay. So this isn't George. Well, this is just English. You, you, you've just asked me well, English questions. Well, this is Southern. <laughs> we don't not, speak like a foreign language. Down there. English, <laughs> Southern. Now you guys put me on the spot too, but all right. Last <laughs> you one. put yourself uh, on the spot. <laughs> no, I know I did. I know I did. <laughs> I know I did. So the last one uh, to end this uh, thing. Uh, this is so, your podcast. If you just take at, over our podcast. <laughs> I love it. Give us another. 
I'm also 22 2 is all power moves, by the way. That's yes. that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yes. Okay. What do you call if you're at a gro- if you're at a grocery store or anything like that? What do you push around? A tr- uh, well, uh, in Australia, we call it a shopping cart, but you guys call it a trolley over here. Not call it Maybe. a trolley. Not even close. I would say shopping cart. So I'm stumped. I'm going with something that starts with a B. Are we on the same page? We're on the same page. We're on the same page. Because we're from the South. Buggy. We're on the same page. Buggy. You're not taking on a golf course. Buggy. <laughs> I've never seen anybody push a, a shopping cart around a golf course. I'm sorry. You it's can't a call it a buggy. No, 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 no. Why are you bringing in golf to this? Yeah. Because that's what you call the thing that you take your golf clubs on. If you're pulling it, it's a buggy, golf buggy. And you have your little shoes on top that you make. I... What's that? <laughs> Uh, what's that? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> this is World Series chance right here, Taylor. I'm not mad about that. Me I'm not mad about that. I can't thank you enough. We can't thank you enough for coming on. We can't thank you enough for testing Peter because he needs he needs to be tested. And I'm glad we got him on the last one. Peter, what's around your neck right now? It's a cord that I can't forget to take up. It's my PlayStation charging cord that I've had down here and I couldn't find it for the longest time. And I've been panicking because I just, just got Gran Turismo 7. <laughs> no, but for it. real, <laughs> for real, we can't thank you enough. We know that you're probably exhausted. I mean, spring training has been a grind this year with it being shortened. And uh, please just know that we are your biggest fans in the entire world besides your wife and your family. Um, and we <laughs> will be, <laughs> we will be supporting you and cheering for you. And um, we should have you and Tyler come on one time and we should do like oh. a trivia between you and Tyler. <laughs> yes. Comedy, absolutely. And we need a, uh, we need TJ on too. Yes. Now when you get us all around this is, it's just pure comedy. That's all. <laughs> Well, we'll be rooting for you this year. I really hope that that our paths cross. Thank you guys You're so much. You're the best. You're, You're the best. Awesome, man. We appreciate you. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for listening. We are all Taylor Trammell fans. Are we doing the in- outro? Give me one second. Let me get the card. Here we go. Farm on. Farm often. We'll see you next Wednesday. <laughs> Maddie, what are you holding? <laughs> This is my uh, Cleveland Guardians press pass from last week. Oh.